50 years ago, China was among the top 10 poorest countries, but today, the country that was among top 10 poorest countries is now becoming the second largest economy in the world and even becoming a global superpower and even investing a lot of things in Africa. The Chinese has a lot of investment in Africa. Secondly, we ask, what's their interest in investing in African economy? In this, we're going to talk about a lot of things. The infrastructure done by the Chinese, what's their interest, what's their goal, and what's their relationship? Why are they investing in Africa? What's their gain? Where is this China-African relationship is going to lead them to? Sometimes they go as far as giving African loans for free. How did China kick the United States out of African continent and becoming the biggest investor in the African market? Even the Africans are doing more trade with China than the US right now. And some people say that you have talked a lot, you are not talking about the loan between African country and China. I got that cover. We're going to talk about that too in this video. The Americans care more about the mineral resources and what they can get from the African continent. Then this is where China comes in. China has seen a lot of flops from the Western world. So China came with a new face of agreement and policy. This is why the African continent really accepted China. The Chinese came to Africa with infrastructure and development. Meanwhile, the West came to Africa with AIDS and food like seriously in this modern century we are coming to a continent with AIDS like what I mean is like medicine food mosquito net if possible so the ones are coming to Africa with AIDS meanwhile China are coming to Africa with infrastructure and long-term development now the problem with some Western economy it kind of it's kind of right anyway they believe that the African economy is too fragile to invest something you may invest in African economy and you end up losing everything so the, the Western world are not ready to do such a business with the African continent. They are not ready for a long-term business partnership with the African continent. Then the Chinese are ready said, we are ready to do a long-term business partnership with you people. Then that's why the African now opened a playground for China. You can see how the Chinese kick out the US and the Western world. The Chinese are ready for long-term business approach. Meanwhile, the West are not ready for any long-term business approach. They are ready about, we come to your country, we take our mineral resources, we support you in it and maybe food if possible. Then China has said, we want to do a long-term business partnership with your country and your people. Trade between Africa and China was $261 billion. Trade with the US for just $64 billion in 2022. So who runs the market now? The Chinese run the African market. They are taking everything. In 2022, the U.S. President Joe Biden held a meeting in America called the U.S. African Summit to discuss the importance of Africa doing business with America. They tried to discourage Africa that this is why you need to do business with the United States. We are more transparent. We provide you more quality of service. We do this for you. Do business with us. But this meeting ended with a total failure. This meeting didn't change anything in the African continent. With a lot of people saying that they cannot go back to the U.S. doing business with the U.S. because they say that the U.S. doesn't respect Africans. But the Chinese are respecting them, giving them what they want. So the meeting held by the U.S. President Joe Biden didn't lead to any success. Please come back and do business with us. Don't do it with China. We are more better than China. We provide you more quality product than the Chinese. But instead of the US to talk about, see, hello, Africans come here. Let's talk about dialogue. Let's talk about mutual understanding. What did you want? They were busy talking about how they are more better than China. Let's talk about infrastructure. And this is the one everybody want to hear about in this video. With a lot of projects scattered around everywhere, the Chinese are dominating everywhere in Africa with different projects here and there. So let's list some of these infrastructure done by Chinese companies or by China in the African continent. Let's talk about the African Union headquarters in Ethiopia. The 200 million dollar headquarters was built by China. I mean China funded this project for Africa for free. This project cost the Chinese government 200 million Hand over to the African continent for free. I mean, totally free. Like, are they really for real? Mabusa Railway in Kenya. This railway in Kenya is the most expensive project done by China. Apart from being the most expensive project done by China, it's the most expensive project by Kenya government since independence. The Kenya government collected a loan from China to build this railroad, a loan of 3.6 billion dollars. 
this project was done by Chinese company, designed by Chinese company, constructed by Chinese company, and hand over to the Kenya. The railroad cuts across two national parks. And during this construction, it was deliberated if this railroad should be done across these two national parks. But based on the importance of this railroad, it was approved because of they said it's going to reduce congestion in the country. But the railroad didn't solve anything in the country. Well, the train will offer passengers a view of a lifetime while passing through the national park. Conservationists are concerned that this construction will affect the ecosystem and the wildlife that live here. Built a road in Lesetho. It came to Lesetho and built a very nice road for this country called Lesetho, Lobito Railroad in Angola, Abuja Kaduna Railroad in Nigeria, Addis Ababa Light Railroad in Ethiopia, Sogri Hydro Power Station, Cote d'Ivoire. The list is endless. If I want to count the numbers of projects done by Chinese, I think this will be so long. How do the Chinese loan work? Let's talk about how this loan works in China. How do Africans get this loan from China? And why do China keep on giving African loan when they know that Africa is not paying? They still give me them loan. China spent over four billion dollar yearly in African continent. Some come as a loan from their country leaders. Some come as a private loan to some individuals taking loan from China. Let's talk about how the Chinese loan work. If a country goes to China, they need a loan for infrastructure. Then the Chinese government finally approved this loan. What the Chinese government will do that is a Chinese company that will do the construction of this project. The Chinese government will not transfer the money to the company that will be constructing this project. In aspect, the money doesn't leave China. The government transfer the money to a company based in China, a Chinese company that, that is into construction. Now, what the company will do now, the company will now come to Africa with their own staffs and some of their employees to come and execute this project. Now, you see how this works. The money doesn't even leave China anyway. This will now lead to the development of the Chinese economy and leave the African country in more depth because there is no money coming to the African country. It's a Chinese company that is running this infrastructure. Chinese government just do is that. They send money from one bank to another and each of these banks are Chinese based bank. No money comes to the African continent. Now you see how this loan policy works. You borrow money from China, a Chinese company is the one running this project. When money moves from Chinese bank to another Chinese bank. Some people believe that the Kenya Railroad was, was a trap for them to owe Chinese a huge sum of money because the railroad didn't actually serve the purpose which it was created for leaving the country with a debt of 3.6 billion dollars to pay China. Can you imagine that? Analysts believe that the Chinese government has loaned Africa 160 billion dollars. This loan comprises both the government and some private state-owned companies. Some of the biggest debtors to China include Angola. Angola is owing China 42 billion dollars. Ethiopia is owing China 13 billion dollars. Zambia owing China 9 billion dollars. How are they going to pay back this loan? All we are hearing is about billion, 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 billion dollars in this loan. How are they going to pay back this loan? 217 in Sri Lanka. The Chinese helped Sri Lanka to build a port. When the Chinese came to collect their loan, Sri Lanka was not able to pay. So the Chinese government said that, okay, since you can't pay your loan, lease us your port. Let's run it for 90 years. The Sri Lanka government was like, lease China our port. They have no choice. Sri Lanka government have no choice than to list China their port. But you imagine listing your port to a country, another country. They can use your territory for anything they want, such as building a military base and doing other things. Could this be the fate of African country if they don't pay their loans? Don't forget, when I was listing the infrastructure done by China, the African headquarter in Ethiopia was built by China. The African Union headquarters was built in 2012. But it was not paid for by any African nation. The impressive new headquarters of the African Union, entirely funded by the Chinese government. January 2017, an IT expert spotted that the servers in the African Union headquarters is sending an information to China in Shanghai. In every meeting that is being held in the African Union, the server send an information to China, and these servers were installed by the Chinese. What, everything was done by the Chinese in this union because they built it, it was funded by the Chinese, they installed all the servers. The Chinese government later denied this, that it was hacked and ordered that they could come and replace it with a new server but definitely Africa said that they don't want them to come and replace this server, that they can do it by themselves. So all the servers were removed and replaced by Africans again. It was believed that it was sending both emails and audio files. Some people believe that inside the chair they were sitting there was mics in the African headquarters. So do you believe that China have uh, another motive of doing some of these things to Africa? 
how can they build an headquarters and the servers are sending critical African meeting information to China in Shanghai? Also, build seven parliament for seven African countries. Now, if China built the African Union headquarters, which it was believed that the African headquarters sent critical information to Shanghai in China, he sent information to China. So, what about these seven parliament that is built in Africa? How do you know if these seven parliaments are not also sending information to China? Experts have not recognized it or so maybe they have not noticed it or this one could be fair game. They just built it. There's nothing like spying. China is behaving like every superpower like the US. It's, a, it's normal. When a country is right to its superpower state, global dominance, this is what happens. They start looking for allies. They start looking for friends. And another thing that is so unique about the Chinese is that they start giving out gifts. When I mean gift, money. But when it comes to international relations, there's nothing like free gifts. There's nothing like free gifts. There must be an interest and there must be a gain in return. The presence of China in African continent has done a lot of good and the bad. You can see there are a lot of infrastructure done by China. We can't even count them in this video. So what do you think about this China presence in Africa? Do you think it's a good one or do you think it's a welcome development to the African continent? Drop your thoughts about this video. I will be there to reply you.